good spirits? Yes. <laughs> Hope so. Uh, I'm Dr. Irina. Uh, I am a Russian eye surgeon, former Russian eye surgeon, and currently a doctor of natural medicine in North America and a serial entrepreneur. I have businesses in both uh, United States and Canada, and I support a community of home healers. Home healers we call ourselves because uh, we are building or creating uh, what we call a parallel system of healthcare, which is not in competition to anything that exists. It complements, because what we advocate is the healthcare by self-care. And uh, technologies like scanner make it possible. Because without it, self-care gets a little complicated. But as you know, with accelerated healing like scanner uh, and like technologies provide, you can actually move healthcare mostly in the hands of end users or lay people. Uh, we like our community, we support it. And um, every year we run uh, conferences as well, <coughs> our own conferences. Last year's conference was on my favorite topic, which was uh, the beauty treatment and cosmetology. So what you will hear today is uh, one of the presentations that was, uh, was developed uh, or delivered at that event. Um, uh, not only um, you should know something else about me. I'm actually a walking piece of scanner history. <laughs> because only a few people in this room are in the scanner world as long as I am. Because I was introduced to scanner in 1996. And I'm working with the technology ever since. So needless to say, in 1996, I was a student not only of Alexander Rebenko, who you all know, but also of Dr. Yuri Garfinkel, who is a legend of the scanner world. And I attended the first training, well, it wasn't the first scanner school, but it was a training which ran in Russian style for five days. Not like you guys will have level one. Our level one was five days straight. And some of you know that because you've been through those schools. Uh, Dr. Uh, Yuri and Dr. Alexander, they had a, a little interesting approach to teaching because it was a bad cop, good cop situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, well, should I tell you who was the bad cop? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, yeah, we were writing down stuff after Alexander Revenko and after a while we said, oh God, I, I'm so stupid, I don't understand nothing of it. And then Dr. Yuri comes in and he's like a breath of fresh air and he delivers everything so simple and so easy and like everything, like, oh yeah, I get it, I get it, I can do it. So, uh, I want you to like me. So I'm going to deliver the presentation in the style of a good cop, which, which means it's going to be extremely simple and very practical. So you will get the practical steps of a protocol that we call the Cinderella Beauty Treatment. Well, um, as you buy the name of my presentation, which is painless breast, neck, and face lift, I'm going that way, uh, you can probably conclude that it is, it has something to do with age reversal, and it does. Because age reversal or anti-aging, actually I don't like the anti, I don't like the antagonistic part of the word anti-aging, um, I prefer age reversal. So, age reversal is one of my favorite topics and a big, big part of my interest. Uh, for one of the reasons for it is that when you deal with age reversal and the pain that it creates, and it does create pain, it's a different type of pain. So you don't deal with the physical pain. Physical pain is easy. Like scanner can do physical pain like this, right? Now what about emotional pain? pain? What about mental? What about spiritual pain? Scanner is a holistic technology. It works on no levels. And you know, guys, that physical pain is the easiest part of the scanner therapy. The most important is to get to the patient's emotional level 
And if you can, to get to a spiritual level through the mental level, through the logic. Why age? Well, I will ask you a question. Do you think age is painful or aging is painful? It is. Well, why? Let's, let's look at it. To me, well, age kills you. Well, age kills you physically, right? Sooner or later. But more than that, age kills your beauty. And that's, that's painful. Because it's dying a slow death. Painful death. Well, aging process, it's natural, yes. We all know it's a natural progression. And uh, we say, well, beauty comes from within. Yes and no. Uh, let's look at this a little bit closer. Age is something that uh, is a program. Like a disease is a program. Age is a program. It's written in our DNA, and it is uh, unavoidable, or we, so we think. The program can run faster or can run slower. So aging can happen faster or it can happen slower. We all know that in the Bible, people lived till 300 years. And yeah, 800. So it's possible. But look at us. So in my eyes, we have an issue with premature aging. And premature aging can be battle and should be battle. So genetically, we actually possible to live much, much longer than we live. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that, this is an exciting topic. It is an interesting process. So uh, let's see where pain from aging comes from. And in my opinion, there are two main reasons why uh, aging create emotional, mental, and spiritual pain. But before I do that, let me show you something um, to actually prove my point. There is a result of Cinderella beauty treatment. And um, I have a witness here, Dr. Don Snow and Nina, were at the training where we have these two ladies. Uh, these results were achieved in two treatments, two. Uh, lady on the right is Nancy, she is 84. She attended the training. Look at the change. And Tamara is around 60, I think. Uh, it's not a physical change. You, it's not possible to change the, the skin, the, you know, the wrinkles into treatments. You realize that. But look at the difference in expression, especially Nancy. Like that was dramatic. She was a new woman and uh, she wrote us a long, well, testimonial about she has now a new outlook on life and looking for a new boyfriend. So, <laughs> uh, this is not a physical change, right? This is emotional change, mental change, and spiritual change. So, where these changes do come from? Uh, and where the pain come from, or comes from? Beauty is an interesting thing. Beauty has something to do with our biological role as human beings. And it's so much more applied to women than men. Because men are not judged by their beauty, right? Men's role in life is a protector, provider, a leader, and a teacher. A protector, a provider, a leader, and a teacher. Biological role. None of it has anything to do with beauty. As men age, this quality only become better, right? Naturally. 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 <laughs> That's cultural, okay. <laughs> but what about women? What about our biological role? Our biological role to deliver the baby, right? To be, be attractive to their mates. So beauty becomes part of our identity, female identity. And that is difficult to battle 
when that beauty starts to fade. Because you're losing your identity, especially beautiful women. Like, if women are not very beautiful, they are kind of used to it, and they identify themselves with something else, maybe with their work, or maybe with their stuff, some, some, something else. But beautiful women are so used to be beautiful, it becomes a part of, it, it, it's their core, it's their identity. So when this identity, they are losing identity, that is painful. And at that point, everything is good, and even surgery, and that's why plastic surgeons are so wealthy, right? Because everything is good, and small pain of the surgery of facelift has so small meaning compared to the emotional pain of getting old. The second reason actually is universal for both sexes, and in my opinion, is a fear of death. Because we as human beings, unfortunately, can project. We project things in the future, and we know that at some point in the future we're going to die. That's okay. When you're young, that doesn't bother you much. But when you start seeing in the mirror the signs that it is coming, the end is near, that doesn't make you feel good. So the fear sets in. Fear is painful. Uh, so d due to these two reasons, people actually battle aging a lot. They do all sorts of procedures and all sorts of interesting things to slow down the process or reverse the process. Now, when do you realize that the process actually began? In my opinion, when you look in the mirror in the morning and you do this. <laughs> right? You do this. <laughs> when you start doing that in the mirror, it means, guys, your time is coming. It's the time to start battling aging process. Um, question to you. What's the worst enemy of a woman? Any opinion? Worst enemy of a woman? Yeah. Gravity force. Of the men <laughs> Gravity force. When you start swimming in the swimming pool, everything perks up, right? <laughs> you look in the mirror and everything sucks. So, gravity force. So when you start doing this in the morning, it means it's time for a Cinderella beauty protocol. Correct? But before we go to the protocol itself, let's review a little bit of the qualities of the skin. So, the skin is the largest organ in the human body. Largest organ in the human body. It has a total surface of about 1.8 uh, square meters, so it's a large one, and weights about 11 kilos. I'm not going to go into structure, skin structure with you because you can read it without me. It doesn't, it's not important. What is important is the collagen because that's what we're going to work with. Collagen is the one that is responsible for our wrinkles and our cellulite. Uh, collagen makes up for about 75% of all the skin. And it is probably the most abandoned protein. Like, we have a lot of it. Uh, I don't have to read you, right? What's written on it? Because what, what collagen does to you? <laughs> what collagen actually is? It's basically the skeleton of the skin. I would call it the skeleton of the skin. It supports it and it gives us the, our youthful look when they have it. Now, what, helps, uh, what happens to the skin when we age? Well, first of all, uh, the external layer of the skin, epidermal layer of the skin, thins. And you know how elderly people, you can see their veins right through the skin. It's because the uh, epidermal layer becomes thinner. It's, well, 10% decrease per decade, approximately. Uh, less collagen is produced naturally. And because of that, if the skeleton kind of cramples, that's what you have with the skin, right? The, the support system of the skin 
is disintegrating. And sebaceous glands produce less sebum, so um, the skin becomes dry, difficult to work with from the point of view of a scanner therapist. And of course, uh, it becomes flabby and wrinkled. These are the tools that we're going to work with. Uh, yeah, uh, I have to do a little disclosure here. Um, with the Cinderella Beauty Protocol or with a lot of other protocols, I work with mixed modalities, uh, which means I do not only utilize a scanner therapy, um, I utilize um, a few other modalities that support and complement scanner therapy. And one of them is a soft laser, a low level laser. Uh, to me, uh, scanner and low level laser create a combination when one plus one is not two, it's 11. Uh, they're extremely complementary. They approach the same process from a little bit different angles, even though, of course, they are standalone modalities. So for uh, this particular protocol, we utilize both modalities. However, you can do it just with the scanner as well. It's not going to be as dramatic, but it's going to be very effective as well. So uh, yeah, my, my scanner is black. <laughs> Uh, no, it's actually MT. It's scanner MT. Mm -hmm. uh, we also utilize attachments, a few attachments. Um, these attachments uh, that you you look on the screen are actually FDA uh, approved, FDA clear. So uh, you can utilize them in your practice safely. We also utilize some other uh, some other attachments, uh, which I really like for the protocol. And uh, for example, this. These are uh, Shungit's, uh, Shungit 16 mils and uh, Shungit flat discs. So you can use, uh, use them with your scanners. Uh, you can use them with any scanner. So. And very, very useful attachment is that little Y one, little Y thing, because it's really good for stimulation, for muscle stimulation. Okay. So, uh, oh, that, yeah, that's how we use uh, Shungit electrodes. Uh, for those who don't know, Shungit is a, uh, is a stone, is a mineral that uh, is being mined in Karelia, a Russian region of Karelia, and it, uh, um, it is very unique in a way it says to be 2 billion years old, and it has very good healing qualities on its own, and when combined with a scanner, it actually enhances scanner effects a lot. Uh, and it is conductive even though stones norm normally are not conductive, but it's not actually a stone, it's something different. Um, the active ingredient is uh, uh, the carbon, uh, which exists in unusual form. It's the uh, actually fifth form of carbon. They're called fullerenes. Uh, so fullerenes are, uh, healing, um, healing, um, have healing properties. Okay, so uh, that's what we're gonna do. On a cellular level, um, or our protocol is gonna re-energize cell membranes to allow transport of essential nutrients across cell walls. It's gonna to stimulate production of ATP, or adenosine three phosphate, which is, as you know, the uh, cellular energy, basically, incorporated. Uh, increase local blood and lymphatic circulation, improve tissue oxygenation, modulates local temperature, and enhances SOD levels and the nitric oxide production, Increase nerve cell action potential, stimulate the collagen synthesis, very important. Increase fibroblast proliferation as mediated collagen production, accelerate epithelial cell regeneration, increase growth factor, very important, and increase cell pro proliferation and regeneration. Okay, these are a couple of results, well, a few results. Uh, which is actually uh, provided to you by myself and Dr. Milana Liptkova from Bratislava. Uh, we worked on this protocol together. And uh, this, is, uh, this is her case. 33-year-old uh, woman with depression, fatigue, and headache. Uh, 30 minutes of scanner therapy results is on the screen after 30 minutes. Sparkle in the eye, very important. Working on deeper than physical level, right? Okay, this is um, also 38-year-old uh, 38 38 woman. 
uh, with um, after exposing uh, being exposed to uh, sunlight for a long time uh, she developed uh, a basically very acute wrinkles as we would say uh, so that was a result um, after uh, what we call facelift but uh, basically Cinderella beauty treatment it was non uh, painless facelift a non-surgical facelift protocol uh, this is actually uh, ocular edema, as you can see, uh, extreme edema on uh, of the eyelids uh, that uh, took five days to clear, but it was clear. Yes, that was everyday treatment. Uh, we did lymphatic drainage. It wasn't the Cinderella beauty treatment in this particular case. It was lymphatic drainage, but lymphatic drainage is a part of the protocol that we're going to learn. Uh, not only for women, for men as well. So, uh, as you can see, disappearing of a second chin and the depression, which is actually very important. And in this case was depression, main complaint. Try to place it, right? It's not pain, but it is painful. Depression hurts. So, when you do the treatment, you feel the pain? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. It's absolutely painless. And also to um, just, uh, this is not a Cinderella beauty treatment protocol as such, but just to um, demonstrate the accelerated effect of scanner healing. Uh, this is what scanner can do after uh, the blepharoplasty, uh, which usually takes about two weeks to heal. In this case, uh, this is five days. So approximately twice as fast How healing. How long does it last for? What, the protocol? Yes. Uh, the results? Uh, they um, approximately six months. <clears throat> then you have to do the um, consecutive course of treatments. Not necessarily full course of treatments, but uh, you have to support yourself, and you can self-administer it as well. well of course, we uh, prefer when someone else does a treatment. As as you know, in scanner therapy, it has to be a triangle, right? Triangle always works better than just interaction between a device and yourself. However. If you don't have anyone to do that for you, then you can self-administer it and simplify version. Okay, typically the therapy um, we do about two, three times a week, depending on um, how a patient can uh, can get to us. Uh, everyone is busy these days, so uh, twice a week would be probably an average. But I would suggest three times. You can get the effects faster. So if you're doing um, protocol on yourself, you, can, you will have to skip a few steps. So it will probably take about 20 minutes. But if you are doing it on one, someone else, it budget about 45. Because by that time, you also have to talk to a client, right? To relax a client and get, them, get, get to the deeper levels. So budget about 45 minutes. Yeah, that's my cat, Zina. <laughs> She loves the blanket. So um, we love to cover a client in the blanket, to cocoon a client in the blanket during the treatment. And even ourselves. ourselves. I'm not going to uh, tell you about the benefits of the healing blanket. You already know that. So that's just, you know, it's a, an added benefit to the treatment. So we use a soft laser and a scanner in combination at the same procedure. Uh, one device in one hand, another one in another hand. With a scanner, you just work with a scanner. Um, this is classical recommendation, guys. That's what I've learned way before. So everywhere on the face, you look on, uh, you work on high frequencies, and around the eyes, you use low frequencies. Well, I have to say that I used, well, I deviated from the protocol and I experimented with it. I found that uh, low frequencies actually work better everywhere. And to me, uh, as you know, low frequencies stimulate, high frequencies sedate, right? Overall. So in my opinion, stimulation of the process of metabolism um, in the face, in the skin, in the muscles um, is more beneficial. So um, I work basically with low frequencies mostly. However, I have to put it here because that's how I learned. That's what was given in the classical, you know, classical 
teachings that I went through. Um, yeah, the last thing, uh, this thing in the box is very important. Uh, don't stretch the skin when you walk with the scanner. You apply slight pressure, but uh, well, as we usually say, about one kilo of a pressure, but not enough to create kind of, you know, elevation of the skin in front of the of, of scanner. So just slight pressure. Good contact, but pressure not much. On the muscles, when we work on muscles, uh, we use uh, amplitude modulation, usually three to one. And um, uh, when we work everywhere else, swing is a great mode. Actually, any swing. Now, you of course know that our skin is very particular in a way, sorry, not skin, our face, uh, in a way that our facial muscles store emotions. With age, certain standard emotions that we experience uh, create certain facial expressions and create certain conditions in the facial muscles when these muscles will be contracted permanently, more than others. And that's why we say that with age, your character will be written on your face. It's because those muscles that you exercise all the time finally put, yeah, put an imprint on your face and you, with all the, uh, all the people, you can actually read who they are just by looking at their face. Now, these emotions are actually uh, linked to the particular muscles. So, the in reverse, when you start exercising those muscles and relax those muscles, what happens to the emotions? They will all come up. So, relaxing of a certain muscle that is linked to a certain emotion will actually release or trigger that emotion. That's why during the Cinderella Beauty treatment, uh, emotional releases or catharsis are very, very common. And uh, you will have clients who are crying on your table. It's very, it's actually quite standard. And you will have clients who will laugh, not that often. For some reason, mostly grief and sadness and uh, those emotions that we store, they, those come up. And of course, as you can imagine, this is very good for healing. It's, uh, uh, it's actually frees a person. And that's what happened to Nancy that our 80-year-old lady, and that's why she changed so dramatically, because she had that emotional release, uh, and that was beautiful, actually. Now, not only emotions release, since scanner reaches mental level and spiritual level as well, you will have also interesting uh, events during the treatment. Some people will come up with brilliant ideas, and some people will realize their purpose in life. We did have it, guys. Believe it or not, but we did have people who said, well, you know, I don't know what happened, but now I know what I'm supposed to do in this life. Well, one of the soul scanner miracles, right? But be ready that they're going to cry. So the first step is we're working on the neck. Uh, what's a color zone? But uh, neck and shoulders, basically it is a massage. It's just a massage with a scanner. It's not scanner therapy in this particular instance. It's just a massage with a scanner. Stroking motions up and down, like this, up and down. You can paint the spine a little bit and go with scanner like this. And here you are applying pressure. You do apply pressure. Well, who can tell me why are we starting the facial facelift with the neck and shoulders. Tension. Tension, of course. All our stresses sit in our neck and shoulders. We want stress relief. We want our client to be as relaxed as possible because it's much easier to work on the muscles which are relaxed. So, the first step would be working on the neck and shoulders, just the massaging as much as you can. Three to one, frequency modulation is a good mode, swing is a good mode. Not long, this one you're doing about three minutes. Just, just three minutes, just relax a little bit. But the next step, well, do I have to explain to you what little wings technique is? 
you will learn it in your level one training. But <laughs> overall, it's when we, yes, when we put the scanner on this, this points on an app, um, and uh, yeah, and the um, muscles in your neck and shoulders start to contract involuntary, and you get this. Involuntary, involuntary. Uh, first on one side, then on another side, and that creates extreme relief, like stress relief right there. It's a very quick technique, if you know where to put the device, uh, modulation three to one for this for, for sure. That's you need three to one frequency modu uh, amplitude modulation. So uh, little wings we do even if you have a client that you want to impress. Forget about the cosmetology. Someone walks in your office, and you want to demonstrate how effective scanner is at what scanner can do. Do little wings, guys. Just put the amplitude modulation three to one, one point, two point. After two minutes, there will be new people because we all carry stresses around and their stress will go just like this, poof. And they will feel great, they will laugh or they will cry. It's very emotional. This is a very emotional technique. But after that, they will feel the difference. So if you want to demonstrate how powerful scanner is, that's what you do. You can do it on any device even on small chance. Or Garfinkel scanner would be great for that. By the way, I think you, the entire protocol can be done on, from what Yuri was telling on Garfinkel scanner. Uh, so that's, that's your second step, uh, still step one, but uh, working on neck and shoulders. Next, very important, lymphatic drainage. Cannot do anything until you open the ways for lymph to flow out. All our poison, all our toxins are in lymph. You need, before you start pushing them out of the cells in the face, you need to open up the pathways, the highways. And the lymph needs to go somewhere, so you open lymphatic pathways first before you start doing anything else. So lymphatic drainage, we call it lymphatic drainage or lymphatic massage uh, in any way, shape or form. You. Uh, can do it, uh, call it anyway, but how do you, how you do it? It's a neck and upper part of the chest. So these are, will be motions, that will be your motions, like this, from the top downwards, from the downwards, like this. And then over here, because where are your main lymphatics? Over here, right? Over here, over here, here, here. So open up these pathways for lymph to flow out. This is not long, like you don't do this, this step for too long, um, about a minute and a half, two minutes on each side, that's all you need. Um, again, swing mode is great. Uh, with this, you can also apply certain pressure, it will be fine. Actually, you have to apply pressure for lymphatic massage. And now, now we go to facial. These are main lines, how you actually move with your device on one side of the face, then on the other side. And as you can see, you can actually do lymphatic, uh, this is the same line you would do lymphatic massage or lymphatic drainage on the face. So you follow the natural wrinkles. Uh, and uh, this is not something that is a standard, uh, typical or unique for our protocol. This you can pretty much uh, find in any, uh, you know, every esthetician would do the procedure in the same manner. But you do it with a scanner. Swing, very good for that. We don't use uh, amplitude modulation for this particular step, um, and you can do it uh, just in subjective mode if you want, depending on your machine. If you don't have a swing, that's fine. Um, but swing, we found that it's more effective. One side of the face, then another. If you want to, pr imp to impress a client, do it just on one side of the face and show them how they look in the mirror. It will be a difference. Um, again, frequency question, we already touched on that, right? And of course, as uh, scanner therapists, we would do right side of the face first, because that's what we, that's what we do. Now, uh, yes, please. 
back to frequencies. Mm -hmm. You said your experience is use low frequency. I uh, yeah, I, I tend to use low frequencies. Yeah. <coughs> Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to a saloon and you do a patient, I'm sorry? When you go to a saloon and you go to a patient, uh, they normally sit behind you and they test you to do circular movement backwards. How would you explain that? Um, uh, when the, f the estheticians do that? Yes. Oh, circular movement backwards. Yes, that's that's what we do too. Well, we don't do circular movements, guys. We actually trying to push lymph out. So we don't do the circular motions. We do it like this. Okay. So when you do it like this, you don't push it down. No, no, we don't push it down. We push it to these points, to TMJ points, or facial nerve uh, exits. Right? We push it to these points. So like this, this, this. So these are the central points. When you work with a low-level laser simultaneously, you use the other side of the face for yes. laser. Yes. Well, well, we actually when I, when I use uh, work with the laser, I do this kind of with both hands on one side, so the, the or or just you know shine the laser and do the scanner just like this. Yeah, but you can apply a, a laser on the skin or uh, keep it on a distance from the skin. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. I'm sorry. Laser? Yeah. Um, I use a Q laser. Uh, uh, it's a resonating one, very, very low power. Um, now, the next point, uh, next step is extremely important. You have to use muscle stimulation because without the release of the muscles, without the making muscles work, your procedure is not going to be effective. So, muscle stimulation happens when you put our electrodes on a certain specific locations, and you know how to do it already. Uh, and again, the very, very good electrode for muscle stimulation is that Y, little Y thing that I showed you. Um, I use Shungitz, but uh, because it gives me more flexibility, um, it's remote electrode, one in one hand, another one in another, gives me just more flexibility. Uh, but Y thing is, the, is a really good one. Uh, muscles of the face uh, often, Actually, uh, they, they have their points. Uh, they do not fix themselves to the bones. They fix themselves to each other sometimes or to the skin. So uh, mimic muscles are uh, interesting that way. You don't, want to st uh, don't need to stimulate every single muscle. But you for sure want to do the muscles around the eyes. That's, that's very important. So these are the zones for, that we would use for muscle stimulation the most. So on the forehead, if you put electrodes like this, like this, like this, you will see muscle contractions. You can move electrodes around and see which position gives you the biggest, the best muscle contractions. But muscle contractions should be visible. You, should, you will see how the muscles actually lift and relax, lift and relax. Um, around the eyes, we use the right eye first, the left eye second. Uh, the points around the eyes are usually over here. Like the very convenient locations, you put your electrodes and just play with them. You can, you can move them around. There are no particular spots for each person. These points will move a little bit, will be a little bit different. Um, muscles on your cheeks do not give you good contractions. You usually will not find it, but around the mouth, they will. So you have to have a good contractions around the eyes and around the mouth. Because this, this part is the sacs the most, as you know. And they say, well, with, well, question to you. Actually, this, this part, women have it much more than men. Like men don't have it sagging, you know, whatever, over here. Why? Makeup and <laughs> exactly, exactly, because they shave themselves, and when they shave themselves in the mirror, what kind of movements do they do with their mouth, right? <laughs> so they exercise these muscles, they are not that <laughs> contracted. Exercised muscles are good muscles, that's what we want, because muscles that exercise, they feed the skin. This blood circulation is good, so the skin is being fed with oxygen and nutrients, and uh, it's not going to age that. Uh, and I'm just joking. <laughs> Got you. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, most important points for stimulation. These are pretty much actually uh, the same st uh, the same points as uh, we already saw when uh, uh, we in prophylactics of myopia and uh, uh, prevention of progression. So lots of all these points are the same. So not only will we have the beautiful eyes, we will also have a better eyesight. These are points uh, of facial nerve. Right, where facial nerve comes, projection of facial nerve. So these um, points actually deserve special attention, and you use a, a swing mode on them. So you can use on both sides if you have two devices on both sides it's simultaneously. Um, and uh, around the mouth, these points, you have it on your, uh, you have it on your slides. Okay, now this, uh, these are points which, which actually do not. Uh, not all of them create muscle contractions or stimulation, but they have important energy points and important uh, to uh, open informational pathways. You have it uh, on your discs, so I'm not going to go into details of every point. But there are two pairs of uh, two pairs of points and uh, three singular points. Uh, you can treat them in any order, whichever you want, um, but try to get at least 30 seconds on each, maybe maybe even less. But uh, this will give you a good, good, good result. And of course, uh, this one you cannot do just, uh, uh, if you have a laser, then you do that, because we kind of illuminate every wrinkle with a, uh, with a stimulating laser. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. Six points on the face, you already know them. It's the same six points that we use in the three pathways, six points uh, protocol. Uh, and uh, uh, these are trigeminal nerve, uh, exit points on the face. Same order as we use for three pathways, six points. Um, and uh, we finish it with the third eye. Now, who can tell me why, why we use the third eye as a finishing point in the procedure? Emotional. Intuition, Intuition. emotion, spiritual. telepathy, spirit. It's a spiritual point. So, put your scanner in the swing and put it on the third eye. That would be just your final touch. And if you have a laser on the crown chakra. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, what do you use the comb? Huh? You get the comb. comb. The comb attachment? Uh -huh. Yes. What do you use that? I mean, use uh, we use it on the skull. Comb attachment is used on the skull. Uh, it's not a part of the protocol itself, uh, but it is uh, skull is, or, uh, is a very, very big zone that uh, is well, our body is holographic, so one of the zones where our body displays itself it would be our skull. So looking in the skull is very beneficial, but we don't always can do it because of the hair. So with the comb attachment, you kind of can reach those energy pathways that uh, and informational pathways that are on the skull. We use it separately uh, with a watermelon technique, or you can do the spirals. The, the, they actually techniques that you will learn at uh, in your scanner training. And the cast. Ah, the cast. The cap? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can use that too. Okay, so, um, uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I, uh, it's, with, with time, we are actually starting the full time. I did have a video for you, uh, I think I do have a video for you with the breast lift protocol. <laughs> but uh, maybe we can do it some other time because it's like we are running out of. Yes, Katie. What's the uh, normal energy level you use? Very comfortable. Um, only with the muscle stimulation, sometimes if you don't have a muscle contractions uh, visible, then you can kind of crank it up. But we prefer comfortable. We don't want our client to feel uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form. It's a procedure that's supposed to relax you and let your emotions come up instead of them struggling with pain. Just let let it come up so comfortable level. Mm -hmm. Which frequency use for your muscle stimulation? I'm sorry? Which frequency use for muscle stimulation? Uh, basically 50, well, 60. 60. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Three for one. Three for one, what matters? Frequency doesn't actually matter much. Is the video on the CD No, no. I couldn't, uh, couldn't put the video on the CD uh, for, well, Client asked not to, so because we have a client who did demonstrate the procedure on. 
Um, it's a seven minute protocol, guys. So totally up to you. If you want, I can show it to you. Yes. Well, it's a seven minutes, okay. Oh, because we don't really, we, we will just show the steps. Uh, Dr. Milana performed the procedure. Um, we just showed the steps of the protocol. We didn't do it as we would do it in normal setting. It would take about 30 minutes if we would do it 